Right, yo, 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 welcome to the Slowpoke World, guys. And today, I heard there was going to be rumours that the Infinity Zone Japanese set would be sort of leaked and revealed today uh, by the time I woke up. And lo and behold, I woke up at about 7. Had a little looky look, not been too crazy. Yeah, got myself ready. Um, let's have a look together, shall we? So Hey guys, just before we get into the video, if you're part of the 60% of people that watch these videos and aren't subscribed, come on now, put a new TCG video out every day, okay? So do us a favour and hit that subscribe button. So, we've got all these new lovely cards. Let's have a look. So, let's get started with, we've got a Paris uh, and a Parasect. Uh, there is a Pokemon now. Paralyzed, okay, it's not very good. Uh, Carnivine, George have five cards in hand for a colourless, not bad. Uh, 20 damage as well could be you know uh, relevant at some point uh, no <laughs> the second attack no pan sage no uh super sage has an interesting ability oh no no not something else all right now we're going to get to i think the first um the first sort of super impactful card of the set um uh, we got ourselves decidui here okay uh stage two pokemon so keep that in mind keep that in mind with the ability forest camouflage prevent all damage done to this pokemon by the attacks of your opponent's v and GX okay so that's interesting let's look at the attack for two energy one grass one colors do 90 and 22 of your opponent's bench Pokemon okay um obviously the ability is nuts the ability does I assume this counts for V Max as well I'm gonna assume it is so once this comes out this says no to a lot of the meta game really um ADP Zation can't touch this as it stands now um never think people won't touch it if they play a Zapdos if they don't play a Zapdos people won't can't touch it um Baby Clowns can obviously run through like normal. Uh, what's the other big port? Dragapult can't touch it, although it can spread damage counters onto him. So on face value, this card's insane. This card can shape the meta game. It's gonna force all these big decks to um, you know adapt, put um, you know babyzations into ADPs, for example. How much HP has it got? Uh, 140. Okay, that's good. Um, so babyzation would still one shot. Just 120, I think. All right. So after Jex, it would still one shot. So yeah, on face value, this is a nuts card, you know, uh, decent HP, uh, decent attack, or the attack's actually usable. Normally the attack on these sort of safeguard Pokemon are like really vanilla. Like if we go back to Hooper, for example, um, Hooper had what, Super Cyber, I think, which was free for 90, which is, you know, not the greatest, but it's usable. But I think the biggest thing that's holding the CGI back, uh, and why I'm not sure if it's ever going to be a really good standalone deck, is the fact it's a stage two. It's a stage two, you're in a Marley meta game here. If someone flips over a Rowlet and you're playing ADPZ, all you're gonna do is just mine him and say, right, go on then, off you go. Now granted, you know, all you have to do is potentially get one Decidueye out, but um, but here's, 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 here's how I see games going if you're playing a standalone Decidueye deck, right? I'm playing ADPZ, opponent is playing um, Decidueye. Um, he flips over a Rowlet, okay? I'm mining straight away. Um, two things can happen off, off the back of that Marnie. My game plan is going to be kind of okay because I've got like Dedene, I've got Elder Grass to fall back on. I don't know if this deck will play stuff like Dedene, probably won't. I might play to like Dirachis and stuff. But off the back of a Marnie, I can only realistically see the other player except up and maybe one Decidui, which is fine. You know, you can walk behind one Decidui. But as soon as this comes out, if it's if it's any resemblance of a good deck, people will start to put Zapdos, Babyzation, they're going to start putting these uh, answers in. And for when you've only got one Decidueye because you've been mined, that one answer now will break through this. And also, 90 damage isn't enough to one-shot these um, one-card answers that people can play. Because these other decks are going to put in like big basic Pokemon that can uh, you know one-shot this. So um, has the potential, but I don't. I think it falls a little bit foolish. Most of these safeguard Pokemon I've been good have always been basic. Just just how it's been. Hooper is the latest greatest example. Uh, two retreat costs is interesting though, so you can potentially use this as like a hit and run style adapt um, wall because you use air balloon it, but again, because it's a stage two, I think it's going to hold it back. It's unfortunate, uh, it, it, it falls, it gets close, but it falls a bit short to me. Uh, we've seen the Houndoom V already, but just we'll go over it again quickly. Uh, Houndoom 210 HP, Searing Flame, 1 for 20, your opponent active Pokemon's now burnt. You know, good little chip, turn two. Uh, compensation plan, I think, is actually really overlooked though. Uh, f 3 for 100 plus. If any of your fire Pokemon have damage counters on, this does to 100 more. So, 3 for 200. 
Uh, they're fairly easy uh, condition to fill for 200 as well. No discarding energy, one retreat cost. I think Houndoom could see, uh, could see play in a Firebox S deck, definitely, 100%. Uh, we've actually got Blaziken, which is actually one of my favourite Pokemon. Um, and this is actually really interesting. On face it doesn't seem like a world beater, but again, when you start thinking about stuff, it actually seems okay. So, we've got Blaziken, stage 2, 170 HP, so a lot more HP than Decidueye. Um, with an ability double type, this Pokemon is fire and fighting type. So that's interesting. A bit like Gallade. Gallade Psychic and Fighting. Blaziken is fire and fighting. Uh, so that means we're hitting something like Picron for weakness. We're hitting Zations for weakness. We're hitting... Um, what other stuff we're hitting for weakness? Uh, any Grass types for weakness. Oh, Willowbrim, I guess. Um, and we get to use like Dancy buff. We get to use Dojo buff if we're playing a uh, basic fighting. Well, I guess we don't need to be fighting type for that, but... Um, yeah, always sitting for two types is always good, always good, especially when fighting and fire, two very good types. So let's see if it's actually good enough. Uh, with an attack for three, uh, three colorless, no it's not, one fire, two colorless, sorry. Uh, 130 damage, attack to basic energy part, a card from your discard pile to one your bench Pokemon. Okay, that's good, that's good, it's usable, it's usable. I wish it was a little bit better, maybe with it like 150, so you can like teeter into two shots a bit easier with Diancy. But um, as it stands now, I mean, it's probably worth noting that by the time you see these cards, rotation would have happened. So I guess you wouldn't have Dancy. <laughs> but um, I think 130 is just about usable. You can use stuff like Burning Scarf to sort of teeter into like, the 150 range. Um, what scares me most about this is how you're going to play it, though. Um, if you try and go down a Welder route, I think using Welder to set up stage 2 isn't going to work. Um, or do you go down the sort of twin energy fire route and sort of use like sycamore to draw through? Uh, that's yet to be seen. Um, but as it stands now, that is a very interesting card. Not gonna, uh, not gonna lie to you. I'm a fan of this Blaziken for sure. Uh, what does Simisir do? Not very good. I guess. I guess thinking about it, Simisir. If you're already playing triple accelerations and you want to hit for fire type weakness, um, Simisir is a stage one that for three colors is 110. Um, so if you want to, I mean, at one shotization, I guess that's probably why uh, why it does that number. So I guess it's a Ditto evolution potentially. I think Ditto rotates as well, doesn't it? Unfortunately, but um, worth noting, fire type triple acceleration energy target. This Darman the Galarian Darmantan also caught my eye. So what I like about this is that it's a fire type that attacks for water energy. Um, it does head up one for forty. Great. Uh, frozen heat one hundred and ten plus. You may discard all water from this Pokemon if you do the 60 more. So if you discard all water, you do 170. This is a so-so number, to be honest. But what I like, though, again, is that this lets you hit for uh, alternate weakness in your sort of Frostbite deck. I mean, going into stage one, but if you're already playing the other Galarian Darmanitan, I don't think, I don't see no harm in uh, winning this one as well. Or well, I do think the other Galarian Darmanitan does like 220 or something. There's a really big number, so. But again, if you want to hit Zations for weakness, you own grass types, so. What does Suicune do? Um, decent attacker in Frost Moth, I guess. There's 130 and returns two water from your from this Pokemon to your hand. So if it was a bit higher, it might be super usable, but you know, not too bad though. Again, the Simi uh, Simi Pool has the same attack. So I'm going to assume that the Simi Sage has the same attack as well. Uh, Simi Sage, yeah. So they've all got. So I guess you can do like a sort of um, a welder or counter or triple acceleration to an energy type deck where you try and hit for all of them for weakness interesting um, if you can sort of try and find some other type attack as I'm sure there are um, you can sort of try and hit but again they all evolve different basics so you know get to the Galarian Dayumaka this vanilla looks was interesting this this actually I think got leaked a little bit before because I saw it on PTCG radio but I never watched the video but um, stage 2 Pokemon 150 HP with an ability, once during your turn, if this Pokemon is your active, you can flip a coin of heads, your Pokemon, opponent's active Pokemon is paralyzed. Again, that's strong, man. Uh, paralysis without having, having to attack? That is ridiculous. Um, I mean, I guess with Will, you can get a guaranteed heads, um, but decks at the minute are playing so many Switch, um, and you might even see uh, decks start to wonder actually with Galarian uh, Rapidash, so it doesn't get uh, can't get put to sleep. So you can choose U-turn board to retreat. If that's the case, this Millet's comes absolutely useless. <laughs> like, um, but as it stands now, um, you know, it could be good. It could be good. Always worth noting. Anything, anything that can paralyze easily is always worth keeping uh, tabs on. Uh, Toxic Pet uh, doesn't do anything. 
Uh, Dreadnought V, we covered these already in the um, in the Eternus leak, but uh, just in case you didn't see that video, Dreadnought V Max does. Uh, it's a V Max Pokemon, 320 HP with an ability. It takes 30 less damage from attacks, so an effective 350. We're going to try and one bomb him. Um, and his ability is Water, Water Colorless, G Max Stone Surge, 160 plus. Flip a coin, uh, you do 80 more. So you do 240. So that's a similar attack to, uh, well, similar condition sort of to Toxpex, uh, Toxpex, Toxicity V Max, except be, um, they have to be poison. You just flip a coin. So with Will, you're doing 240 for free. Decent, decent. You know, it's in that sort of Zation range. Except this is a stage one, and Zation is a uh, basic. So I don't see much reasons to play this. I think you can probably find if you're gonna sort of have like a water type nuke attacker, I'd probably need more towards Lapras than this. So. Yeah, there's that cool artwork there. Uh, Draco Fish, let's have a look what he does. If this Pokemon is your active, your opponent can't. Um, oh, this one snuck by me. Okay, that's actually really good. Free retreat cost of three is annoying though, so you can't uh, balloon him. That's probably why they gave him a free retreat cost. So. And the attack's actually not too bad as well, in all fairness. So let's have a look. So. Stage 1, uh, oh well, from this new fossil card we'll get to in a sec, 150 HP ability, if this Pokemon is your active, your opponent can't play any Pokemon from their hand to evolve their Pokemon, that's good, that is a cracking ability, because um, there isn't no, like, back in the day when this was, a, um, I think Archaeops had it, you could want Evo Soda if you really wanted to get around this ability, as it stands now, I don't think there's any Wally or Evo Soda-esque type effect in format, if you know what I'm on about there, um, Evo Soda and Wally evolve from decks, so we've got around this sort of ability, um, and the attack, water colour, let's call 120, that's fine. All you need in this sort of a deck or is just an attack that's usable, that puts enough pressure on. 120 is a good number to test it. Two shots, all these V Pokemon. Um, and they can't V Max anyway, so that seems fine to me. That's actually really cool. 150 HP as well means that the most of the non evolving V, I mean, most of the evolving Vs aren't doing 150. If we think to like Dragapult V, um, if we think to Toxapex, oh no, I guess the, the baby Toxicity can, to be fair, if you're poisoned. But then, then Toxicity can't poison you because they can't evolve their garb. So, I actually really like that's a sleeper card, man. That's a good card. I'm a fan. What does Arca Fish do? Are you as good as the other one? Um, no, you're not. Okay. <laughs> Uh, electric. That's a, okay. What does Metric do? Metric normally has interesting cards. Let me switch this with one of your bench. Oh, yeah. This I think would have been nice. Strafe on an electric type, so you have access to like electro charge and electro powers and all that. But again, the chances are that um. Oh, I tried. You can't even see the Pokemon when I do that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, Chances are this gonna rotate. Electric power's gonna rotate by the time this car comes out. So got a little turnus in the background there. <laughs> should, we just, should we just quickly go look at all the artwork that I've um that I've been hiding off behind the face cam real quick. <laughs> I apologise there. Some of these I probably ain't seen these cards. There we go. Uh, da, 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 da. What else have we looked at? We'll look at the Galarian Dai Maka. Dai Manatan, so he's pretty cool. There's the Houndoom. There's the uh, that. Okay, right. Let's get let's get back into it then. I apologise for that. Uh, Wiggly Tough. Well, note that all the psychics are now fairy types. I mean, fairies are now psychic types. It's kind of weird to look at. Um, got no good. Shuffles, uh, you, you choose one copy of French. Oh, no, that's bad. What does Gothitelle do? Mm, I mean, nah, it's not that great. Basically, what he does uh, for two energy, you do 90. You choose two cards from your opponent's hand and shuffle it back into their deck. So it's like Nightwatch. But um, on the stage 2 for 2 energy without Malamar as well. No chance. Go look. This to that to me just having sick artwork. Look at my boy holding up the world. Oh. <laughs> uh, the card is terrible though. <laughs> um, Mimikyu. This is interesting. Mimikyu has an ability. Um, your opponent's bench Pokemon can't be healed. So... Uh, stuff like Hyper Potion, you know, anything like this. But the main thing it stops is Malolana. Now, I think it does stop Malolana because Malolana is you switch your active first and then you heal. So, technically, the active is now on the bench. Um, don't hold me to that. That might get ruled differently. But um, as it stands now, I'm fairly certain this will stop Malolana. And that is huge in the sense where as more V matches come out, the whole sort of tanky um, play style, the sort of turtle play style, is only going to become more and more viable. And Malolana keeps that play style uh, alive. It's one of the best ways to heal as it stands now. And Mimikyu stops that. So Mimikyu always has good abilities, doesn't he? 
or good attacks as well. Really good card. Galarian Course V. As long as this Pokemon is your active, your opponent, whenever your opponent attaches energy to their hand, one of their Pokemon, put three damage counters on that Pokemon. And then for two energy, you do 60, and put three damage counters on your opponent's po bench Pokemon in any way you like. Um, it's got, a, it's got a two retreat cost, so you can balloon and use it in a hit and run style. That's interesting. Um, is it good enough to stand up on its own? I think it's 190 HP isn't a lot. Um, they can just go over the top of you very easily. Um, we need to dark. You have to think about now. Now that turn is going to be a thing. It's probably a bit of a not very great. And 60, that's a terrible. And I think that's what holds this uh, this card back the most. 60 damage for two is awful. This Flygon's interesting. Hang on, if I do that, like, can you see the artwork still? Ah, there we go. Okay. So Flygon ability Sand Maze. If this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, the the opponent's active can't retreat. Uh, we've seen this ability before on Plasma Snorlax way back in the day. Um, it's a good ability. It's a good ability. It comes up a lot more than you think, realistically. But as it stands now, Dex is still playing for a Switch, so you know there's that. There's also a very good supporter in this set as well. Um, that switches. So uh, attack fighting colorless. Colorless is 130. If your opponent has a staging in play, discard it. If you do, during your opponent's next turn, effect, all damage and effects done to this Pokemon by effects of your opponent's Pokemon. So. That attack's decent. Uh, 130 is a decent notion number, a little bit low. But the whole discarding a stadium thing is interesting. I feel it's because it's your opponent's stadium now, they're just they're just not gonna play like as soon as your opponent flips over trap inch, right? Uh, provided you know what this card does, you know what like, it exists. You just don't put down stadium unless you really, 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 really have to. Or they've actually got energy to attack. So you play, they probably only fall for that once, but um can it be a standalone 150 HP and they can't retreat? Um, probably not. They say Powered on do nothing. Why well, period we covered this on the Eternus League. I actually think it's quite decent to be honest with you. Uh, basic Pokemon 230 HP, which is a ridiculous number. Uh, two attacks, fighting colors, colors to dual one, 80 damage, discard one energy attached from your opponent's active. Anytime you auto discard, and you have to look at this, um, look at this because it's fire colors, curse, you can go for a welder type deck as well. Um, and I think that's actually really strong. Command of stuff like hammers and flare gun, you can easily be taken off two of for energy a turn. And as the meta stands now, um, with all that the acceleration rotating, that seems strong. That seems strong. This seems like one of the low key sleeper cards, I think, in this set. And Heavy Got kind of does 210, you attach one more energy, does 210, and your opponent can't attack during your next turn. Decent little cleanup attack, really. So, yeah. Persimian ain't the greatest. Well, I guess Persimian for one colorless has call for family. Such a deck for two basic Pokemon, put them on your bench. That's okay. It's okay. Uh, we covered the Ariados of the Eternus leak, but just in case you didn't watch that video, in which case, I don't know why, why didn't you watch that video? <laughs> you, when you play this card from, uh, from your hand to evolve your Pokemon, you may switch one of your opponent's uh, evolution Pokemon if they're active. So, a bit like Bloodthirsty Eyes, a bit like Appleton, but for, only for it works for your opponent's evolved Pokemon. Um, any, anytime you have Gust on an ability, I think you have to look at the card uh, second, uh, two times. I think it's good. I think it's good. Whether it gets any play outside of your turn this deck, I'm not sure. But um, good card, good card. Got Crobat V, Shaman with a cap. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually going to be as good as Shaman, though. No. I was having this discussion with someone the other day. Uh, okay, in case you know what Shaman does, when you bench him, you drop the six cards in your hand. Shaman exists in a format with Hooper and Ultra Ball. Mostly Ultra Ball. So at any time, if you had one Ultra Ball in hand, you're always going to at least draw about two or three cards of your shaman as it stands now um there isn't any sort of cards that just bin cards out of your hand that fast I mean, you obviously have quick ball but quick ball is for one less so if you have a sick a six card hand and you play quick ball to grab crowbat you're only getting two cards whereas with uh, shaman you drew three in that scenario if you had ultra ball so you know and if you had two ultra balls in your hand uh, off your uh, shaman oh you're getting like a four five or six so um, after the knee jerk reaction, everyone said, I'm not sure it's going to be as good as Shaman. Obviously, Shaman obviously draw multiple Tondo. You can Shaman, Shaman, Shaman. This is stopped at one. But I don't think it's going to have that same impact. Still a nuts card, don't get me wrong. But um, I don't think it's going to be as good as uh, Shaman. Uh, we've got a new Galarian Ziggurat, and you have zero reason to play this over Headbutt Tantrum. Uh, Galarian Laloon. Again, you wouldn't play this over the other Galarian Laloon because that has. Um, you turn that attack, which is good. This Galarian Obdagoon, though, I think you do play a one-off if you're playing goons. Um, stage 2 Pokemon, 170 HP with the ability Bad Ruler. 
Once during your turn, you may have your opponent discard cards from their hand until they have four left. That's nuts. That's like super, super dirty. Um, your opponent can never have more than four cards cards in their hand, basically. Uh. So what I like about this is it's gonna limit the uh, it's gonna limit the options that your opponent has. If you're playing Optagoon, they probably you know if Optagoon gets good, people can start running their text for it, all right. And if you're ripping cards out of their hands, you're also you're saying get those texts whilst not having like you know an excess of cards to go grab them basically. So um, I think that's actually decent. Scrafty, nope. Okay, we've got a new Mali. We've got a new Mali. So out of respect for old Mali, I will give him a read. Um, stage one Pokemon decent for a dark colorless. Your opponent's active is now confused. That's not great. And then for dark dark colorless, you do 80 flip two coins. There's 40 more for each heads. Not quite a psychic recharger, is it? Uh, there's the hoop up. It's basically Zapdos for dark types. Um, not bad. Obviously, there isn't no electro power for dark, but definitely a good card nonetheless. Uh, we've got a Nicky, we've got a Thievul, not that great. We've got a Turnus V and a VMAX. In case you don't know what this does, it's basically Mega Ray. Um, the ability, if all your Pokemon play a dark type, you now have you can now have up to eight dark type Pokemon on your bench. You can't play any other type of Pokemon. If you do, you have to discard to have five. So it's got like an inbuilt Skyfield just for dark types on its ability. And then the attack is 30 times each Pokemon you have in play. Well, 30 for each dark type Pokemon you have in play. And it includes itself, so it's a little bit better than Ultimate Ray. Um, Ultimate Ray, uh, what was it? Emerald Break, I should say, from Mega Ray Quaza. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be good. It's a nice, easy sort of two shot in deck to set up. Only attacks for two, so you can, like, you know, play like Weavile. You can play like Bees and stuff to keep him going and keep supporting him. I think it'll be good. Now, here's a card that I didn't expect to see. That is a Scissor V Max. There's the artwork for you. As it stands now, I think it might be the worst V Max we have seen. Uh, it's got two attacks 120 HP. Um, Metal Colorless, you do 90 damage on your next turn. This Pokemon takes 30 less on attacks. I don't think that's enough damage. That needs to be like sort of a 130 range for that to be good. And you do max steel bikes for 190. So, yeah, I don't see this. Uh, you can play it with ADP, but I see zero reason to play this over Zacian. Zacian does more, does more damage, and it's a basic. So, I'm not, I'm not quite sure where, how you build this. Do you get like an energy denial route? Sort of like the scissor, the scissor GX that we've got. I think scissor GX does that for better. So yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Skarmory, no cling, no. This cling clang does 200 um, for metal colorless, colorless. I don't know if that's good enough anymore, but yeah. Coproaja, no, I'm not really a fan. Too expensive. Okay, we got a Teddy Ursa, who is super cute. And then we've got Usering, which is a scary boy. Is he doing anything good? Nope. Skitty, so you don't know. Is that confused? No. Okay, we've got Salamance V. We went through this. Uh, this attack, uh, there's three energy, there's 30 snipe everywhere on your opponent's board. Super good spread, that is. And then for four, there's a flat 160. And again, here's a card I didn't expect to see. Salamance V Max. Okay, okay. Uh, what this guy does. This attack does 40 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. Don't apply weakness and resistance. And then for four NG, you do a flat 240. Uh, I don't think Twin Tonic is good enough. I need it to be like 60, I think. Uh, as it stands now, it's probably our best sort of target is spread that we've got. If I'm not forgetting about anything. But then, why would you play this over Dragapult? If you can come to a reason for me, let me know. But, um... As it stands now, I can't think of a reason why he plays over Dragapult. Um, 240 for 4 isn't even that effective, uh, in all fairness. So. Okay, we've got Starly. We actually have the ability on some of these bird Pokemon, where Sky Circus, if you play Bird Keeper from your hand during this turn, ignore all energy attacks. Uh, uh, ignore all energy in the attack cost of this Pokemon. As it stands, they're all on like, little basics. Uh, what it does let you do, though, is search your deck for two cards and put them in your hand. So that's pretty cool. Like double computer search. Um, Swan is not very good. Greed is not very good. Um, okay, now on to the traders. We've got Team Yellhorn. Um, each player's active is confused. You might be able to put it in just like a mill or a stool type thing just to add it a bit more uh, layer of irritism. Uh, I mean, as it turns now you have got Earringing Bell. Earringing Bell provides that they have to hit into you though. So this is a bit more active in that sense, not really a, a react. No, this is a bit more proactive than reactive. Sorry, so you got that. 
Now this car turbo patch, I don't know what they're thinking when they print cars like this, man. This is just silly. Like what? Like, who, this doesn't promote healthy games. Right, turbo patch, flip a coin. It pairs choose a basic energy car from your discard pile and attach it to one of your basic Pokemon, excluding GX. This is silly. This needed to be for non-GX or non-V, man. So as it stands now, you can you can use this for Zation, for example. So now you've got eight uh, metal patch, right? Like, what are they? And it's on a coin flip, so it's not even reliable. So, like, if you want to build a deck around this, you have to accept that 50% of the time, you, four of your cards in your deck aren't going to have their effect. And it just promotes super, like, look sucky. He, he drew the nuts games where, like, turn two, you find two sources and two packs, and you've just got four energy on, and you can basically attack with two Zations or, like, other ridiculous Pokemon. And I just don't understand. I don't understand why they do this sort of stuff. Obviously, it's a great card. They get, it's, I mean, it's a good card. We could argue that because it's not a coin flip. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I just don't like cards like this. That needed to be for non-GX, non-V Pokemon. That would have been so cool. That would have been so cool. Like, all of a sudden, you have to cards like Gallade and that Blaziken in a new light, but not a fan of that. Not a fan of that at all. I don't know what they're playing at. Here's that fossil we were talking about with the Draco fish. It's a different one to the other one. This is interesting. They probably did that on purpose, so you can't like combine all the fossils into the same deck and make it super consistent. Oh, it also means you can't lab. Oh, is that what it's for? I mean, let me quickly check that. What is the um What is the um text on fossil lab? I mean I'm gonna imagine that it can't, but I just wanna just make sure I'm covering all bases here. Um lab. Pokemon Research Lab, search all that. Yeah. Uh, only, research Lab only works for Pokemon that evolve from Mysterious Fossil. So, as it stands now, you can't use Research Lab for any Pokemon that evolve from this fossil. Uh, key difference is this fossil has 70 HP. Can you still retrieve it? Uh, discard it, I should say. Yeah, you can. It can't be affected by special conditions. I and mean, it's got 70 HP now. Um, but Toughness Cape, interesting card. The maximum HP of the basic Pokemon this card is attached to is increased by 50, excluding Pokemon GX. So, any sort of tanky V Pokemon, we can give an extra 50 HP, which is nuts. As it stands now, would you play this over Big Charm? I guess if you are exactly a basic V type deck with no V maxes, you could play this if you want to increase your HP. There's no reason why you couldn't. We got Mountain of Smoke, which is a weird old card. When this Pokemon, uh, when the Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, put your opponent's prize cards they pick up into a discard pile instead of their hand. It's too situational. That is way too situational. There's too many stipulations. You have to be knocked out for a start. So any tool that relies on you getting knocked out, it's got to have a bonkers effect for it to be worth it. Could you put it and just play around it? Like Lucky Egg, for example, or Giant Bomb to a lesser extent. These are bonkers effects that make it worth it. Um, so not only do you have to be attacked, you have to be knocked out, and your opponent has to take a prize for a very mediocre pet that you put it in the prize cards. No, stop that. Like, stop that. I don't know if that works on Victini Prison, but even if it does, it's not worth playing that for that. Get out of it. Uh, here's a super interesting trainer that on face value I thought was rubbish, and I actually thought about it in the shower. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Switch your active Pokemon, one of your bench Pokemon, then draw three cards. So, on face value, it doesn't seem that crazy, right? What this is, it's an Elder Gloss viable search, number one. Okay? If you think this card pass, I think most decks will play one, I think, just for that. But in Turbosation, when you lose Tate and Liza, I'd argue this is better. Because you're seeing cards now as well. You could argue that Tate and Liza lets you shuffle and draw three on the occasion, so it doubles up a bit of utility. I hear that. I'd rather see a flat free card in Zation. I'd rather see a flat free card in Zation. So, that's actually a low key sleeper good card, that, to be honest with you. Like Olympia saw play, and Olympia was a pretty much the same card. Um, just because it was a VSC Crubble switch. Now, this is an Elder Gloss it's a searchable switch in case you need it, so. Piers, search your deck for a dark Pokemon energy, put them in your hand. You probably play this in the turn, to be honest, because you've got a lot of stuff like Crobat to help supplement your draw. Um, and because you attack for so little energy, you probably don't play that many. So being able to just pluck them out when you want seems quite decent to me. Rose is cool, I'm a fan. Search your deck for two, uh, no, choose up to two basic energy cards from your discard pile, attach them to one of your V Max, then discard your hand. Uh, face value seems a bit crazy, but you know if you have ways to draw up in your in your uh, on your bench, that's fine. And you have the stage that you can use as well. Uh, there's the stage in Rose Tower. Once during each player's turn, you may draw cards, so you have three cards in their hand. So you can see the synergy there. You use Rose, and then you draw up with Stadium. Um, seems a bit super high rolly, a bit risky, but you know, if there's going to be some sort of mad Pokemon partner, maybe a uh, Center Scorch is that partner for that thinking about it 
But um, yeah, seems good. Spike Moth Stadium. Whenever a player is moved, whenever a player's Pokemon is moved from the active spot to the bench during the turn, put two damage counters on that Pokemon. Um, again, anytime you get residual damage off about attacking, is also interesting that you have to think about it. But um, this would wreck stuff like Zapdos, or if you're like a Hooper only deck, I guess. Um, again, it seems a bit too situational for me. Stadiums are like super strong, right? Uh, especially in the formats we've got now. We've got stuff like uh, Silent Lab. Silent Lab? No. Power Plant, sorry. Uh, we've got stuff like Viridian Forest. Wonder Lab. Um, I guess Wonder Lab won't be in format. But um, like the other stadium you have to contest with is Kurtex Well. Um, and a stadium that only does damage when your opponent switches. I'm not sure. Interesting, though. Right, now we're getting on to my favourite card in the set. Not this one, we've got Hard Energy. Uh, as long as this card is attached to a Pokemon, it provides Dark Energy. The retreat cost of the Dark Pokemon attached to is now zero. So, like, Float Stone for Dark types, that's pretty cool. A turn that has some chunky retreat cards just alleviates that. But here is my favourite card in the set. So far. This is crazy. It's like a strong energy reprint, man. As long as this card is attached to a Pokemon, it provides colorless energy, okay? The attacks of this colorless Pokemon's card is attached to do 20 more. Oh, I didn't realize it's only for colorless Pokemon. Okay, I guess that makes more sense. But, um, I thought it was for anything. So, um, now that it's only for colorless Pokemon, is it still the favorite card in the set? Uh, I think it has a lot of potential. I really do. Um, I can't think of the best colorless targets now. Um, I imagine you guys in the comments will because you're much cleverer than me. But, um, so it's a strong energy for colorless types. That's good. That might be the best curlers buff I've seen in a long time. Yeah, stuff like Winona um, back in the day, which is okay. I don't have a strong energy though. We all know how strong strong energy was, right? Um, so yeah, that's interesting. That is actually really cool. Now you have to do stuff like um, uh, what was that called? Salamence V Max in a different light. I think this is actually a really cool card, man. Really cool card. I can't do the combinations now, but I know they will exist. We, we, uh, strong, I was playing when Strong Energy was from release to when it rotated, and that is a silly card. So, anytime you got anything like that, is a really good effect. So, and we also it's going to be providing energy cost as well, because obviously all Curlus Pokemon attack were just Curlus, so it's not going to be like a wasted attachment like Weak Guard is in Mewtwo, for example. Or, so yeah, it's going to be really good. So yeah, that is the uh, Infinity Zone first impressions video, guys. Let me know what your favorite card is in the comments. You know mine. You let you, know, you tell me what yours is and tell me why. Shay, why are you being so boring? Why was that energy called by the way? What was it called? Uh, powerful energy. And say, Shay, why is your favorite car powerful energy? That's boring. <laughs> but uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.